Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. DTE officials answering tough questions in Lansing over the recent power outages. Also in Lansing right now, lawmakers are gathering outside of the state capitol, hosting a gun safety rally. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald. Right now, former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords is in Lansing with Michigan lawmakers for a gun safety rally. The visit comes a month after the deadly mass shooting at Michigan State University that killed three students and left five others injured. Let's get right out to Megan Woods. She is live in Lansing with the very latest for us. Megan. Christy, emotions are high out here. This rally started at 11 o'clock. You can see it's still going on. In the crowd, we have parents, teachers of survivors, victims of mass shootings, school shootings. There's also anti-protesters. And at the podium right now is Attorney General Dana Nessel. We've also heard from other politicians as well as survivors and victims from both Oxford and um, Michigan State. And take a listen to what Governor Whitmer had to say. Gun violence is the leading cause of death in this country and only in this country, and we have experienced it too frequently. There are three immediate priorities we are focused on. Universal background checks, safe, safe storage, and extreme risk protection orders. We are done only offering thoughts and prayers. It is time for action. Okay, and uh, tonight at 4, 5, and 6, you'll hear more from rally goers, supporters, as well as anti protesters. And at 4, you'll hear from uh, Gabby Gifford about what she has to say. Live in Lansing, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. All right, thanks so much, Megan. Just the latest in a series of rallies since the shooting at Michigan State University. Now, on the national level, President Biden is calling for better laws to curb gun violence. The president laid out a new executive order that directs the attorney general to make sure background checks are being enforced, and it also calls for several other gun safety measures. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington with more. Among other things, President Biden's executive order aims to increase the number of background checks done. The president acknowledges his actions are largely symbolic and says significant changes must come from Congress. It's been nearly two months since a gunman opened fire at a Lunar New Year celebration in California. Additional units requested multiple victims, gunshot wounds. Killing 11 people. President Biden honored those victims Tuesday and unveiled his latest effort to keep Americans safe. It'll accelerate and intensify this work to save more lives more quickly. The president signed an executive order. It directs the attorney general to move the U.S. as close to universal background checks as possible without additional legislation. It also ramps up efforts to hold the gun industry accountable. It does that by calling out for an independent government study that analyzes and exposes how gun manufacturers aggressively market firearms to civilians, especially minors. Gun safety advocates praise the president's actions while stressing there's still more work to do. Is this as much as I would like to see? No, but this is a lot more than pre any previous president has done on this issue, especially, you know, with a divided Congress. Republicans argue legislation won't solve the problem and point to gun violence in California, a state with some of the strictest gun laws in the country. What he calls universal background checks wouldn't have stopped a mass public shooting in this century. According to the Gun Violence Archives, there have been 110 mass shootings in the U.S. so far this year. The president says it's time Congress take action to stop gun violence. President Biden is again demanding an assault weapons ban, but with a divided Congress, passing gun legislation certainly faces an uphill battle. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. Thanks, Bree. DTE is in the hot seat today as Michigan lawmakers want to know how widespread power outages can be prevented in the future. This hearing comes after hundreds of thousands of Michiganders spent days in their cold homes after multiple winter snowstorms. 
Power company claims that they can't control the weather, but customers say other states in the same weather conditions do not see the same kind of mass outages. During the hearing, DTE apologized for those outages. We recognize that any time without power is a hardship. And when you have to go days without power, it's even harder on our customers. This is not the service that we expect to give to our customers, nor is it the investment that we're putting into our grid. It's not what we would have expected to happen, even in a major ice storm like we had. The Michigan Public Service Commission already has an audit looking into DTE's infrastructure. Our Rod Maloney is in Lansing for that hearing. He will have the latest for us tonight on Local 4 News at 5 and 6 o'clock. Governor Whitmer is expected to sign a bill repealing Michigan's right to work law. Yesterday, the state Senate voted to repeal the law that was passed back in 2012. It comes after the state House approved its own version of the legislation. All right, let's go ahead and take a live look outside this afternoon. It is all quiet on the weather front. It looks beautiful out there. But for Warren Meteorologist Brandon Rue is tracking our next batch of rain to end the week. Hey there, Brandon. Hey, hey, good afternoon, Christy. I think, yes, good advice. I mean, get out there, enjoy it today. Most of tomorrow looks pretty dry, too, but pretty significant weather maker coming in to end our week with some bad luck, St. Patrick's Day. We've got middle 30s all across Metro Detroit, 34 Pontiac, 35 in Ann Arbor. It's 37 at Metro. You remember how chilly it was this time yesterday? We are a good 7 to 11 degrees warmer than we were 24 hours ago. So at noontime yesterday, we were middle 20s, and now we're middle 30s. We'll take it. Lots of Wednesday hump day sunshine. You see just a little bit of cloud cover passing northern lower. Some snowpack showing up on the satellite, especially as you head into southern Ontario and the tip of the thumb. But maybe, yeah, head out to Mount Brighton or Pine Knob or somewhere today because we've got quite a rainmaker coming. Might be tough to enjoy the last of this snow. We do have low to middle 40s. Lots of Wednesday sunshine today and again tracking a significant storm coming in details ahead. All right, Brandon, we'll see you in a few minutes. The Davison and Lodge freeways are back open this noon following a shooting overnight. Police say a man from Hamtramck was driving home from a friend's house when he heard gunshots. He drove away from the area quickly and got off at I-75 and 8 Mile. Then he called police. He told police he didn't see a gun or a shooter, but his car had three bullet holes on the rear driver's side. Police are investigating. We do have a traffic alert for Oakland County. A project on Woodward will start on Monday. Lane closures and nighttime closures will stretch from 8 Mile to 696. MDOT is resurfacing the road and adding new bike lanes there. So during the day, two to three lanes will be open, and at night, one to two lanes will be open. The project will run straight through the fall. Might cut down on some cruising speeds there. Well, coming up, a recall alert from one major automaker. The seatbelt trouble you'll want to hear about is coming up next. Plus, the home of Detroit sports on TV in a bankruptcy bind. What this means for watching the Tigers, Red Wings, and Pistons. Stay with us.